Hello, and thank you for joining us today in our study of the book of Psalms. Today we continue our study of Psalm 119. We are in our fourth part of this particular study. It's probably going to be about nine parts in total as we go through the longest chapter in the Bible. In Psalm 119, we've looked at the first uh, several sections of the psalm, and today we come to section number nine. We're going to deal with sections nine and ten today. And these two eight-verse segments, again, under the theme of the Word of God and our relationship with God and His Word, these two sections are going to deal with the reliability and the goodness of God, but also noticing the importance of what we do in the midst of that. So let's look. We're going to begin in verse 65, and we'll be reading down through verse 80 today. Beginning in verse 65, the psalmist writes, You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in your word. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right, and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Let, I pray, your merciful kindness be for my comfort according to the, your word to your servant. Let your tender mercies come to me, that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed, for they treated me wrongfully with falsehood, but I will meditate on your precepts. Let those who fear you turn to me, those who know your testimonies. Let my heart be blameless regarding your statutes that I may not be ashamed. As you look at these two sections, there's a lot of similarities between the principles of the sections. But let's notice a couple of things as we break down applications from it and the way that it's communicating. In the first section that we're looking at today, verses 65 through 72, you have this setting that God has dealt well with this individual, and yet there's still periods of affliction and turmoil in their lives. But I want to hone in on something that's stated in verse 67, because there the psalmist says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. There are a lot of people of whom it could be said that before they fully put their trust in God and before the uh, a time of, of turmoil happened in their lives or affliction happened in their lives, that they had gone astray from God, that they had not done what God said, they had not been willing to fulfill God's commands. And sometimes it's because of the affliction and the turmoil that they go through that they're willing to then pay attention to what God says, and be willing to turn and obey. You know, for some people it's the case that it's not until they they reach a very deep or dark point in their lives that they're willing to look around and see why they're there and what God has to offer and what it is that God's been trying to reach out to them with from the beginning. Here, the psalmist says, without any... Uh, desire to sugarcoat the truth. He says, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. You have this reliability that the psalmist has in God and in his word. 
He says, the law of your mouth, verse 72, is better to me than thousands of coins of gold or silver. He has found the value in God's word. He hasn't always seen it. It's not always been there. He hasn't always done what is right or been following God, but he sees it now and his heart is fully invested in it. In the second section of our study today, beginning in verse 73, you also have this mindset of being thankful to God and recognizing in the midst of affliction that God is faithful. But I want you to notice the very opening statement of this section because he says in verse 73, Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. There is a recognition at the start of this section that God is the creator, that he is the one who is responsible for the existence of the psalmist. And that as such, as God has made him and fashioned him, he says, give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. One of the essential aspects of understanding our relationship with God is understanding that he is the one who is responsible for our existence. And without that understanding and without that recognition, the willingness and the ability for us to listen to what he has to say, for us to be willing to follow after him and, and to take seriously what it is that his commandments teach, doesn't come. Here you have the psalmist who has full and complete b belief and recognition in not just the fact that God exists, but in the fact that God is the one who purposefully created him. I know, O Lord, he says, that your judgments are right, verse 75, and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Remember, he's going through things as, as is stated here as well. Let I pray your merciful kindness be for my comfort according to your word to your servant. And then he says in verse 80, Let my heart be blameless regarding your statutes that I may not be ashamed. Why? Because I don't want to disappoint my creator. and I don't want to do what is wrong toward the person who is responsible for my existence. And so you have this recognition of God being the one who is responsible for creating. And with that, there is a recognition of what is our response to him through his commandments and through his word. These are the things that I've seen in this section of Psalm 119. We'll come back next time and we will pick up with verse 81 and continue our study through the longest of all chapters in the Bible. I hope that these things have been beneficial to you and thank you for watching the video today. Next time, I hope you'll join us again. But until then, have a great day.